Hi guys, welcome to another video of our X unit with Selenium. And in this video, we'll be talking about how we could add few more code with Selenium and how we could start working with the data and stuff. So for doing that, uh, once again, I'm gonna probably copy this code, I'm gonna paste it over here. Uh, and we're gonna say test uh, fill data, something like this. Uh, and let's try doing this. So once I navigate to the browser, I'm just going to Probably this line looks a bit bigger, so I'm just gonna say driver over here and I'm gonna put this guy like this and we can refactor this to driver uh, so that it looks better and once we have this we're gonna say driver dot find element by ID and I'm gonna say I'm gonna enter the username uh, but before that I'm also gonna do a find element by uh, link text something like that and I'm gonna say this is gonna be login So if you have not seen this eaapp.somi.com website you probably know what I'm really talking about So if I just go over here, this is the one uh, And which it has a login link over here. It has a username and the password uh, Like this so I'm gonna be entering all those details from the test that we are writing So the first thing is we're going to click this particular uh, login link and once we have this uh, clicked then we're going to find the element by the username and then we're going to do a send keys which i'm going to pass the username as admin uh, and then i'm going to pass password and then i'm going to click a button which is going to be the login button something like that so the id of the password is going to be password and the password is itself is password uh, and the button which i'm going to be clicking is going to be dot btn default and let's do a click and once we do that then we're going to write the test output helper dot write line of uh, test completed that's it so this is the uh, normal test the hard-coded data test that we have written so let's quickly run this test and see if this works so it has opened the browser, click the login, it enters the username and password, and then it failed for some reason. So let's see what has gone wrong. I think the ID is not correct. It's gonna be find element by CSS selector instead of the ID, uh, and this course should work. Uh, so I'm not worried about running the test once again, but it is gonna be working fine. But now the question is, how do we really work with the uh, datas or test datas in XUnit? There is something called as uh, inline datas in uh, X unit. So if you just use something called as inline datas, where you can actually pass the inline data that you are passing in. For example, if you know what data that you're going to be passing in, you can enter it over here. And you can see that this inline data attribute actually takes a param of object array of data. And there is a property called as, uh, which is a default property says, Keep is equal to string. So uh, that is the only thing which it has. And it says that the data value to pass to the theory. So now you may be wondering what is this theory about? Um, I will show what I really mean about this theory in a minute, but let's worry about how we pass this object array of data. You don't necessarily have to pass like an object array, which we'll be talking about in our next video. But as of now, for passing uh, data within this particular test, uh, we, we are gonna be entering what? Username and password. So these are the two fields that we really require to be entered uh, on this particular login. So I'm gonna say username is gonna be admin uh, and the password is gonna be password, not too complex. And these are the two things which I need to enter within this class fixture test field. And it tells you a screwy line here. It says fact method should not have a test data. So this is what I really mean while I talk about this inline uh, uh, data while I showed you on that context. It says the data value to pass to the theory. So basically, we are going to introduce what is called as a new attribute called as theory attributes. So this theory attribute is what is something responsible for uh, working with the inline datas and uh, like class datas or metadata, something like that. Um, so those things are going to be supported only by this theory attribute of X unit. So as you can see, the theory attribute, it marks the test method as being a data theory and the data theories are the test which are fed various bits of data from the data source 
mapping to the parameters on the test method and if the data source contains multiple rows then the test method is executed multiple times uh, and the data provide data is provided by the attribute which drives the x unit dot sdk dot data attribute so this is cool and i don't want to go into the theory once again that's why we don't really have a slide but you can see the scrolly line what it says is there is no matching parameter for the value admin and the password what does that mean so you can see this method doesn't really have any parameter so i'm going to pass the parameter here probably username and password something like that so once i give these two you can see this scrolly line is gone the red scrolly line is gone but there is a green scrolly line i think this is a happy scrolly line doesn't have to worry about this code will still compile and run but this happy scrolly path what it says is uh, we have really not used this username parameter anywhere on this particular method so why to worry about it uh, i'm going to use it now so this is the username that we're talking about and this is the password to enter so now we have made a data driven testing on this particular inline data so let's try to run this test and see what really happens so uh, basically what it's going to do is like once we run this test it's going to open the browser and it's going to enter the data that we have entered in the inline data the admin and the password works fine which is magic and the next thing is like how do we really work with multiple datas guys this is just one data why can't i just work with two or three datas together so if you want to do that you probably can do with like multiple different combo uh, to do that so for example like this like this and uh, like this something like that and now if you try doing a build solution um, i was expecting it to automatically do it but for some reason it doesn't and you can see that the test explorer is pretty intelligent enough to automatically create as all the different uh, uh, tests based on the test data so it says totally there are four test datas and it has to be executed sequentially so you can see it has opened a browser centering the username passwords an invalid attempt is <laughs> failing uh, but still the test is passing because we have not made any assertions uh, and for some reason the last test has got failed uh, which is okay because we don't have to worry about it yet uh, so yeah this is this is how we could able to see that the inline data which is entering all the test datas are actually working fine and this is how we can actually work with the data driven testing with x unit but in the next video, we'll see how we can overcome the problem of hard coding this data over here, like multiple different attributes. Rather, we can use some sort of custom data loading from a property or a class file. Those things we'll be discussing in our next video. But for now, this is the basic of data-driven testing.